Hi again. Um, so it's Sunday morning and I'm, I'm going to make a, a brunch because that's what you do on Sunday. And this is my, my I'm going to attempt to dedicate myself to never going and doing a shop for these videos. So I am always going to try and make food from genuinely what I have. So there are some things here that, you know, I wouldn't choose, as in I would wish it was slightly different. These chickpeas, I'll explain. I, I wish they were cannellini beans, but they're not. Um, so what I've got here, so last Wednesday, we had sauce, vegan sausage and mash and gravy. It was really nice, but there was loads of leftover mashed potato. So what I did was I fried um, some mushrooms, some, I, I like to rip mushrooms up as opposed to slice them so you get chunky nuggets. So fried up some mushrooms and uh, sliced Savoy cabbage in, uh, I think it was in coconut oil, with garlic and some cumin seeds and garam masala, fried them all up and mixed them up with the mashed potato. So there is some of this mixture left. So I think that would make an excellent base for like a hash brown for breakfast and rather than, well brunch, rather than having it with um, uh, baked beans, which plates shall I use? Um, oh right, sorry, let me explain. This is uh, semolina, like um, uh, the coarse semolina. So it's kind of crunchy. It's very good to get a crunchy coating on things. Um, what I'm going to do actually is just move this lovely chopping board out of the way for a second. Put the plates here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'll explain what I was going to say about the beans in a second. First of all, let's get the, the semolina onto this plate here. Um, and then I'm going to use some gluten-free flour just because uh, I, I sort of like to avoid gluten, uh, wheat, uh, gluten where I can. And it's not going to make any difference if this flour is gluten-free. It's not going to affect, like if I was making Yorkshire puddings or something, which I might do later, vegan Yorkshire puddings, I think if I use a gluten-free flour, that might not be so good for it puffing up and stuff. I'm not sure. I might be wrong about that, but um, I'm going to use it here. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make basically a, a cake, like a hash brown potato cake. Excuse the fingers, but you know, really that's what you need to do. You need to get in there. Um, and I'm going to roll it into, we'll sort of mould it into a little... Oh, there's chilli in here too, of course, because I put chilli in everything, because I love it. And we're going to make a little patty, like this. And first of all, just going to plop it into the flour. This is this is very um, messy work. I think Nigella Lawson talks about this when she was making her her ritzy chicken nuggets back in the day. How she had an, a, her and her assistant assistant had a sort of name for what happens to your flowers, to your oh my gosh I'm so tired to your fingers. Um, eek. This is quite a a wet <laughs> a wet mess. But it's, it's good. It's going to dry up now because it's got this. Uh, it's going to slightly do that. It's making a mess. From there. I mean, I suppose at this point, if you weren't avoiding eggs or anything, you could dip this in egg so that this goes crunchy. But um, I think there's still enough moisture in this potato cake that it's going to soak up the polenta and the polenta will stick to it. So this is good. What I need, I'll tell you what I need. I need this spatula because every time I try and pick it up with, with my hands, it falls apart. There we go. That's better. Um, get it nice and coated. It's not sticking amazingly well, but at least it's going to have a bit more structure to it than if I just shoved it in a pan like that. Okay, right. I'm going to take these away and wash my hands briefly. Okay, so um, that's the potato cake, and it's going to sit atop um, 
like what would be baked beans this is this is basically like quite a nutritious version of a hash brown and baked beans so the hash brown as you've heard has got um mushroom and india a few indian spices and garlic and chili and cabbage in it so that's that's already nutritious underneath i'm not going to use i've got normal baked beans in the cupboard but i'm not going to use them because i think i would like to make my own Ideally, I would use cannellini beans, but I've got chickpeas, so that's what we're gonna use. So I'm gonna make um, a nice spicy, because I like spicy, tomato -y sauce to put them in. This is only for me, so I don't need to do very much. I may not even use all those. Mm. They're quite, they're getting quite squishy, so do you know what, I am gonna use them. And I'll just save those three little yellow tomatoes for somebody who might wander into the kitchen wanting, wanting a tomato. You know how that happens sometimes? I'm gonna cut these quite small because um, we want it to reduce down into a, a sauce, a, a baked beany sauce. Oh, I've got such a good tip as well for making baked beans is to um, add, in my case, vegan Worcester sauce. But, you know, if you're not vegan, you can just uh, use normal Worcester sauce. It's got anchovies in it, that's why. Ah, oh, drop the tomato. Okay, it's washed. That's fine. Um, uh, it's got anchovies in it, so that's what makes it non-vegan. Um, but, oh my goodness, Worcester sauce in uh, baked beans is awesome. Because I, I, I even put it in... Um, normal baked beans just to kind of pimp it up a bit <laughs> make it uh, taste more more uh, fun <sighs> yeah because you know food should be yummy and tasty and fun okay so those are all our gorgeous tomatoes all chopped up next garlic obviously because i just love garlic I think I'll just go with one clove. Let's let's not go crazy. This is, you know, it's not night time. <gasps> we can't let all the, the craziness come out just yet. Crush it up. You know, let's be civilized. It's daylight out there. Um, I have just done um, some yoga, which is why I'm 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 dressed like this. Um, uh, I'm always going to try and appear exactly as you find me. It is my pledge to you because, um, because uh, this is how real cooking happens, isn't it, in people's homes. You, uh, you're not there camera ready always. <laughs> Why would you be? People don't live on TV world okay over to the hob hi welcome to the hob um i'll tell you what i forgot which i think is actually gonna um be um uh, make it um even nicer is some rosemary and thyme so just gonna um Take off a few leaves of these, and not not much, because actually I'm gonna save some of that for a uh, roast dinner that I'm making tonight, because um, I'll need a bit of rosemary in time for my, I mean, there's loads here, let's face it. But I don't want too much in this, that's what I'm thinking. Just a little bit, because it's baked beans, it's not, it doesn't need to be too herby. It needs to be more sort of punchy and garlicky and Worcester saucy. Okay, good. I just needed to do that. Right, so. Um, I have got a little, little pot. Anything that you might cook baked beans in. Oh, yeah, the light is on. Um, and where is it best for you to see? I'm going to have to move the camera at some point. Pop on um, a sort of medium temperature 
I'm gonna get some extra virgin olive oil because I, when I'm making a tomato sauce, I always use extra virgin as opposed to just the cooking oil because it's uh, more flavorful and it's gonna flavor your sauce. It's gonna flavor your sauce well. I know what else is gonna be good in this is paprika. Because you want beans to be smoky as well, don't you? I was wondering about smokiness. That's gone in. I just felt that, as you saw, I didn't measure that out. I just kind of, that's how I tend to do it. That's why I also like to, to have mold and sea salt in a thing and I pick it up with my fingers because I can feel the amount in my fingers and I can see and feel with the oil. Now, when it starts to get warm, you can just kind of put your hand over it like that. Like, oh yeah, it's starting to get warm now. In goes the garlic and the herbs. They're just gonna have a minute or two by themselves. Oh, tomato's trying to get in on the action. Um, so that they can uh, just flavor the oil, really. Make that a nice uh, flavored garlic. Mm -hmm. You hear it? That's garlic and herbs sizzling away. Garlic and rosemary, you know it's gonna be good. I don't put the chili in right now because if I did, I'd start coughing because chili, when it's like exposed to oil and heat, it's like, oh, it kind of fills the air with um, uh, spicy uh, vibes. More sleep. Okay, so now I'm gonna put, we don't want the garlic to burn at all. So in go the tomatoes before, so that their juiciness is gonna stop any burning happening. You can hear it's calming down already. I'll show you. And now I'm gonna put the chili in because it's in a load of saucy stuff. It's not gonna disrupt things too much. Come and have a look because this is nice. I need a cameraman or woman. Hang on. Oh gosh. Can you see? <laughs> you know it's gonna be good. You know it's gonna be nice. It doesn't have to. It'd be nice if you could see it though, wouldn't it? I promise it's gonna be tasty. A little bit of tomato went on the side. Right, I'm gonna add the uh, chickpeas now because I want them to get involved in the flavours as soon as possible. I'm going to put like about half the amount. That was all, that was a tin of chickpeas there that was in that box and I've put half the amount in. Give that a stir. Now very important, <laughs> sorry, is the seasoning. So salt, pepper, and because we did say, or I did say, smoked paprika. No brands. Smoked paprika. Um, and the amazing vegan mustard sauce. You can find it in my health food shops, I think. Uh, let's put the salt and pepper in first because I feel like they are very important. See, I just kind of what feels right to you it's just what feels right I guess you get to know over time don't you pepper let's give it a bit of a stir up oh this is going to be so nice smoked paprika again I don't know I'll just kind of put some in taste it if it tastes like it needs more, I'll put more. And now, you could actually put oregano in this as well. Oregano and paprika go quite well together. Worcester sauce. Yay. So we want this to cook down and be quite beany. So I'm gonna taste it first, see how the seasoning's doing. It's really nice. I'm going to let it um, come together for a bit longer. You can see the colour is already changing and becoming more beanie. 
Well, that's better. It's sort of becoming orangey now. I think that's the smoked paprika. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so let's, I'm gonna turn the heat down. Let that simmer. And meanwhile, cook up the potato cake. So for this, I will use um, normal cooking olive oil because it's just for frying. So we don't want to waste extra virgin olive oil on that. But I do need some coffee. Nice. Okay, so that's uh, the pan. I always want the pan to get a bit warm before I put the oil in. I feel like that's that's all right, but not too much. Just it's beginning to warm up. It feels wrong to put oil into a cold pan. Does anyone else feel that? Or am I alone? Um, yeah, okay, so that oil is beginning to heat up. Here we have our little, our little cake. Looking a bit weird and anemic, but it's gonna look super nice when it's finished. I've got the heat on a sort of medium because if it's, we want it to kind of cook medium slowly so that it it heats all the way through, but it also goes like golden brown and gets little, catches little bits. So you get little crispy bits, like might, a bit of cabbage might stick out and get a bit crispy. You want it to kind of like have a good, while like with roast potatoes you don't want to turn them too often because you want them to get really stuck to the bottom of the pan and they'd be crispy bits and so that's kind of what i'm going for with this if i cooked it too quickly it would go dark brown on the outside and and not not unctuous and it wouldn't be properly heated through and you know right i'm gonna get my spatula thing but i'm gonna actually move now to is it silicon? Um, because I've got an, a non-stick pan, so I don't want to scratch scratch my pan like that metal spatula would have done. So, oh, you can't see. I'm basically just um, see if if you like and subscribe, I might be able to one day get a, a camera person, and that'd be good, and I can argue with them and tell them where to point the camera and stuff. Right, in this goes, can you see, that's the question. Slide that in, ah, uh, you can hear that pleasing sizzle. It means that the oil was hot enough. It was ready to receive its potato cake. And the beans are, are simmering away nicely. It's all going to plan. I think I think we can we can safely say this is going to be really nice. What I would love is some spinach to put in those beans because it, it kind of there are flecks of green in it. There's flecks of uh, green chili and the herbs, but I feel like it's crying out for um, some spinach leaves in there. What I could do in the freezer, I've got you know how sometimes you can buy those smoothie mixes. I've got like. A, a smoothie mix that's like frozen tropical fruit and kale. I could get, I could fish out some of the frozen kale from that bag and put it in there. I'm gonna do it. Because then, we're just getting healthier and healthier. And you just feel like, oh wow, this brunch has really sorted me out and not made me feel worse, like I've got to go and lie down. Look, there's loads of kale in here. Frozen kale, which is just, you can put frozen into that sauce. It'll just immediately uh, defrost and start cooking with the beans. So when it goes, just a bit, just to make you feel smug for the day. Um, look, I'll just put this back in the freezer. Oops, see that kale? Let's stir that in. That's a very happy addition 
to this pot of, of beans. Oh my goodness. There is so much good stuff going on in this breakfast. How's the potato cake doing? I can see around the edges. Can you see it's beginning to go? Oh gosh. A little bit golden around the edges, which is telling me that it'll be time in the not too distant future to flip it. No, that's not good. So, I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit for this kale, actually, just to really introduce it. I'm going to flip this potato cake now. Let's see, get it, get the spatula right underneath to try not disturb it. There we go. And gently, whip! <laughs> I'm fine. There we go. Look, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good, and you see that polenta is crunchy. So it's gonna be really nice. This is just gonna need some time on the other side. The beans need to simmer a bit. I think I'll join you when I'm plating up. Okay, everybody, join me at plating up stage. First, onto the plate. I'm gonna put our base Oh, beans. Oh, ho, ho. They smell amazing. They are amazing. And then we're going to get our lovely crispy potato, mushroom and cabbage cake and plop it right on the top like that. And then for extra joy, because I think who doesn't love avocado and how is avocado not a great addition to brunch it always is we're just gonna like pull up around the edges and you can see that gorgeous um paprika -y oil just oozing out from underneath again. My stomach actually started rumbling. <laughs> um, um, oozing out from underneath. So that really is gonna be. Okay, so let's try it. I mean, like you could totally put ketchup on this if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna try it as it is so that Oh, it looks so good. Got a bit of everything here. Let's see. Oh my God. I'm gonna put ketchup on that. But just so you know, it doesn't need it. This is, listen. That is crunchy. It's creamy inside. It's got chunks of mushroom nuggets. There's the chickpeas in the fresh tomato sauce and the chili, paprika, the soy, Worcester sauce, there's so much going on. And then you get a little treat of avocado around the side. Um, make it, this is good. Have a wonderful Sunday. I know it's probably the end of Sunday now. Bye guys. <laughs>